Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshal. Today, I come to you with a bit of a heavy heart. It seems we have suffered a great tragedy in this country. Pretty soon, we're going to be losing the lives of a lot of Americans. Uh, not important Americans, just all the people who live in Ohio. It seems like the governor of uh, Ohio, who is Mike DeWine, and that's actually a person, after seeing him on TV many times, I was under the assumption that the governor of Ohio was the ghost of Orville Redenbacher. But apparently, this is a totally different person. And today, he did something, like I said, that has numbered the days of the people who live in Ohio. He has signed constitutional carry. That is a law that says people can just carry a gun whenever they want. The Constitution gives them that right, and states don't have a right to stop them. Well, as we know, that's just going to cause bloodshed. It's going to be a bloodbath. Blood's going to flow free in the streets. At least, that's what you hear from local law enforcement agencies. That's kind of the tone they took when they uh, banded together with Moms Demand Action to fight this bill. So, they have our best interest at heart, right? So, if the police don't want it, it must not be good. You know, this bill's just going to let any person carry a gun. And, you know, most people, they're irrational, evil monsters. They're going to solve all their problems with guns. Cashier shortchanges you, shoot them. Someone takes your parking space, shoot them. Someone gets in front of you in the 10 items or less aisle with 11 items, shoot them. It's just the way, and heaven forbid they try to write a check, shoot them twice. Everybody will shoot them. That's the way it's going to be, I'm sure, because, you know, people are just irresponsible monsters. And plus, this bill now, since it's there, they're not going to have to receive training. Since they're not going to have to receive training, since they are all way too stupid to operate a gun, you know, they have to remember two things. They have to remember to keep the end with the hole in it pointed at things they want to destroy and not to touch the trigger until they do want to destroy it. Most people can't handle that. That, like I said, you're going to have people killing themselves left and right. Shooting their neighbors, shooting their pets, everything accidentally, shooting themselves in the balls. There's going to be so many people running around at first with just no balls until someone else shoots them for complaining about not having any balls. Uh, it's going to be horrible. And police, of course, like they said, it's going to be too dangerous for them to do their jobs now because they're not going to know who has a gun and who doesn't. They can't look in their little database and say, oh, this guy's got a carry permit. He's probably got a gun on him. And so that they can just shoot him now. Uh, they'll just have to assume everyone's carrying a gun. They'll either have to not do their job at all or shoot everyone preemptively. Who could blame them? You know, this is the way uh, police and the media and Moms Demand Action and the left, etc. have made this sound. And of course, like I said, they wouldn't lie to us, would they? Well, of course they would lie to us. And they have been lying to us. There's lots of other states that have constitutional carry now. No problems have arisen from it. Haven't seen huge increases in people shooting themselves accidentally because they don't have training and haven't seen people going out and using guns to solve their problems. Just haven't seen it. It's just not true. It's not reality. Constitutional carry is not a dangerous law. In fact, I think it's a law that makes it less likely that people will think other people are victims if they don't know who's got a gun. If anybody now can have a gun on them, any old lady that didn't bother to go take a training course and go do all the hours of, uh, of paperwork and stuff to get a license before, you know, people could reasonably assume, hey, that little old lady probably didn't do all that, so she probably doesn't have a gun, so I can hit her with a pipe and take her purse. But now, if it's like, well, she doesn't have to go through all that, she just has to have a gun, that's it. She just has to have one and carry it. And she just has to be smart enough to know how to work a gun, which I think most people are. Guns are not that complicated. I know a lot of people in the gun industry and the gun community love to say they're complicated and only trained people should own them because they want to sell you training. You know, uh, car salesmen used to tell you that uh, uh, underbody treatments were good for your car. You know, the, the rust treatment for your undercarriage. And trainers tell you, oh, you have to have gun training to be safe with a gun. Bullshit. Uh, just have to be of reasonable intelligence, of reasonable temperament, and you can handle a gun just fine. You don't need anybody else's permission. That's the way it is. I'm sorry. 
but like I say, a lot of people like to demonize the whole idea of constitutional carry. Even people in the gun community who think that well, you have to have training or you have to have permission from someone who's better than you with a gun before you can carry one. I don't like any of that. I am so glad to see them pass constitutional carry. And this makes the 22nd state. And there, I think there's two more already in the pipeline. So we are getting really close to half of the states having constitutional carry. That is a real uh, accomplishment as far as I'm concerned. And in fact, if we get two more, I think that should actually pretty much count as half because there's just some states that shouldn't be states. I mean, we should probably only have about 46 states at most. Uh, come on, the Dakotas, should they really be two different states? Together, they don't have as much people as one decent county in some other state. You know, so how, two states, come on, just Dakota. Uh, and there's other states in that same uh, boat there. So we're, like I said, getting really close to half the states having constitutional carry. And guess what? The states that have passed it haven't become bloodbaths of people just using their guns to solve their problem. Hasn't happened. Hasn't become dangerous from people. Uh, there hasn't been big increases in incidences of people injuring themselves or someone else accidentally with their firearms. Hasn't happened. So all these hypotheticals that they like to preach are easily disproven in reality. Just like the whole training requirement thing has never been anything that you should pay much attention to. If you look at states that have training requirements to carry a gun against states that have never had a training requirement to carry a gun, like Oregon and Washington. Oregon requires tra training, Washington doesn't. They border on the same damn river and there's not a damn bit of difference in numbers of people who harm themselves with firearms, people who accidentally harm other people with firearms. There's not much of a discrepancy at all. Definitely not one that would suggest that the training makes a difference. And that's the same from state to state. Other factors, like what kind of neighborhood you live in, way more determine whether you're ever gonna to have to discharge a firearm, more so than the laws on who can carry do. So it's all a bunch of malarkey. Like I said, uh, to use Biden's favorite word, and I liked that word before Biden was the one using it, so I refuse to surrender that word to Joe Biden. But like I say, it's all a bunch of malarkey. Now Ohio has joined the ranks of states that recognize that the Constitution gives everyone a right to carry a gun, and I, for one, am happy they have. I'm glad we're about to reach that halfway mark, and I hope we get it to where it's a national thing before too long. All right, everybody, I want to get out of here, but before I go, I want to real quick answer a question from a viewer. They asked me, how would I carry on a bicycle? He's been trying to figure out how he can carry a firearm while he's on his bicycle. Well, I think everyone already knows the answer to this. Wear a fanny pack. That's what they're for. Fanny pack holsters are great for when you're biking, when you're hiking, when you're doing anything. I know a lot of people have a bad opinion of them, like, oh, I'm going to look like a tourist. So, what are you, 12? You care what people think of you? If you're engaging in an activity, especially like riding a bike and you're wearing those fucking skin-tight latex or whatever they are, uh, 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 spandex pants, uh, or latex, depending on what you're into, and you're going to care about wearing a fanny pack? Come on, you look fucking ridiculous in your little bike out suit and clack, clack, clacking around in your little shoes. So, why would you care if someone thinks something about your fanny pack? You already look like a fool. So if you're on a motorcycle, bicycle, anything like that, where you don't have pockets, you don't have a belt, that's what fanny pack holsters are made for. No one's going to think anything of it. The only people that think, oh, there's a gun in that fanny pack are people that carry a gun themselves. Everybody else is just going to think, well, there's his wallet and his keys. And make sure you get a good one that has a built-in holster. But other than that, fanny pack is the answer. It has been the answer. It's going to be the answer. And like I said... Why would you care what anyone thinks about you? You're a grown-ass man, not some 12-year-old child. All right, everybody, that does it for me for today. Thanks for coming. I'm glad you did, and I hope you come back again tomorrow. Until then, I just want to remind everyone to always carry and stay safe until I see you again. <laughs>